greetings. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins and rose again to third. My name is Brother Ed, and I'd like to welcome you to KJV Bible Scope. And we are in the Book of John series. We are on a part 174. We are in the probably the last broadcast of the Bible Truth of Foot Washing, Part 6. We're going to climax everything together, put everything together, Lord willing. We're going to try to make this intro really short so we can get to it. We are in the midst of John chapter 13. We're going to be covering verses 34 to 38 today, and we're just going to close out the whole John 13. So let's go ahead and get a start on this. Open up your Bible to John 13. Get yourself a King James Bible, and we're going to start in verse 34. Okay, I'm going to flip it over to the Bible. If you don't have a Bible, you can look up on your screen. The Bible says, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. So, the commandment isn't foot washing, right? So, here's a commandment. Uh, that he is calling a commandment. See, he actually says it's a commandment there, right? The commandment Jesus is talking about is Leviticus 19.18. Now look at that one. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. But Jesus is about to make it a whole lot bigger, right? We're about to talk about this whole thing of loving one another, but then... Uh, the rest of the passage uh, reveals more truth here. So the old commandment is love thy neighbor as thyself. The new commandment, watch, is that you love one another as I have loved you. It's gotten a, a whole lot bigger uh, when Jesus said that. The truth of the new commandment is that Jesus loves me more than I love myself. Hmm. You guys see that? The new commandment is that you love one another as I have loved you. Who can love one another as Jesus loves them? <laughs> that's, that's, it's one thing keeping a commandment, and most people can't. I mean, nobody can keep the commandments, not to earn salvation. But I tell you this, um, when you look at the commandment, you don't look at it like the way Jesus said it. We just look at just keeping on some commandments as just obeying, you know, just some obedience there. But to actually love somebody as Jesus loves them, that's on a whole nother level, my friend. So let's go on to the next verse here, John 13, 35. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. By this shall all men know that ye are. Oh. Will they know because you have a King James Version? Will they know you're, you're his disciples if you believe Paul and Peter had two different Gospels? Will, will, will you be his disciples? Will you know that you're his disciples if you believe in John Calvin and fatalism? Will you know that you're his disciples if you uh, go to an independent fundamental Baptist church? Will you know that you're his disciples if you live under some dietary laws and separate yourself from those that eat fatty foods? Will you know that you're his disciples if you homeschool and separate from those that don't homeschool? Will you know that you're his disciples if you ha only have fellowship with anyone because they don't live up to your standard until you until you're on your own island all by yourself with your strange standards and your justification being after all Jesus was by himself on the cross. Come on, is that, is that what we're doing? Is that how we know that we are his disciples? You'd be surprised what people will judge themselves as being a disciple of Jesus and what it encompasses and, and entails. What does the Bible say? John 13, 35. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. How? If ye have love one to another. See, it's the total opposite of what people want, right? Uh, people want to divide in the church. They want to say, well, you don't agree with me on this, so I don't agree with you on that, and so we got to separate. Well, I don't love you anymore. I don't go to that church because they don't agree with me. Well, see, uh, the Bible don't teach that. The Bible says want to know that you're a disciple of Jesus Christ, you're going to have love one to another. You know what? There's a whole chapter on charity 
in 1 Corinthians 13 that you need to read if you want to learn more about love. Um, I mean real love, love in the church, okay? Uh, that's going to be very, very, very edifying uh, if you want to learn more about how to uh, correctly love one another. All right, we don't have time to hit, well, you know, maybe one day we'll do, you know, the future if we're still, if we're all still alive, I'll do something in in Corinthians, you know, maybe first, second Corinthians, maybe we can do an exposit on the book of Corinthians, that would be pretty interesting. Um, but for now, I, I'm we're in John right now, let's just, let's stick with what we got, amen, praise the Lord. So by this shall all men know that you're my disciples. If you have love one to another, this is proof of discipleship, not salvation. This is proof of discipleship, not salvation. One more time. This is proof of discipleship, not salvation. All right, go to verse 36. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither goest thou? Jesus answered him, whither I go? Thou canst not follow me now but thou shalt follow me afterwards. Hold on to this thought here of what's actually being said in John 13, 36. Isn't Peter's faith going to fail? Doesn't Jesus know that? Yeah. Isn't Peter's going to forsake him? And doesn't Jesus know that? Yeah. Isn't Peter going to curse and swear and deny the Lord? Doesn't Jesus know that? Yeah. Isn't Peter going to go back to fishing? Doesn't Jesus know that? Yeah. Isn't Peter going to get caught naked on a boat? Doesn't Jesus know that? Yeah. Right. Keep holding your thought there. Look at verse 37. Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Jesus answered him, Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, The cock, the cock shall not crow uh, till thou hast denied me thrice. Jesus says three things. Jesus says three things here. Pay attention to what we said, uh, what we said and we're just building up foundation here. I know you're going to deny me, but you will end up following me to where I'm going. Peter has some sort of security given to him by the Lord that overrides the sins that Jesus knows he's about to commit. For some reason, he does. I mean, that's what's going on there when you read it in the chapter. Peter said that he would lay down his life for Jesus' sake, and Jesus said, that's where I'm going, and you can't follow me now. Is it right? He was going to lay down his life. He says, that's where I'm going. You can't follow me now, but you will follow me afterwards. And Peter did end up laying down his life for Jesus' sake. He just wasn't ready at this time like he thought he was. See, see that, that's the truth being brought here. Now, in John 13, 37, Peter says, I will follow you. And Jesus says, yes, you will. Then Peter says, where, where you're going, I want to follow. And Jesus says, you will, but not now. So where is Jesus going? Isn't he going through death to heaven? Didn't he tell Peter, you are going to follow me through death to heaven? But then there's an incident along the way of Peter denying the Lord three times. Remember that? Then Jesus finds him and asks Peter if he loves him three times and then restores him. Remember when Jesus told Peter he would wash his feet and Peter saying, wash all of me. And Jesus is saying that he's taken care of all of that. Remember that you don't need to be washed head to toe, but you do need your feet washed. So at the end of the chapter, what do you have? You have a man who is clean. Come on. He's clean enough to say Jesus or I'm sorry. He's you have a man who is clean enough to have Jesus say, you are going to follow me through death to heaven, but you have a man who's going to deny the Lord three times and have to get his feet washed along the way. Look at the promise in John 13, 36. Look at it. Whether I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. So whether I go, where's Jesus going? See where it says, whether, whether I go? He says, where is Jesus going? He's going from death to heaven. Thou canst not follow me now. See where he says that? Uh, verse 36. It's not time. You're not ready. That's what he's telling Peter. But thou shalt not, well, thou shalt follow me afterwards. 
So there is the statement and the surety that Peter is going to be where Jesus is. Then there's the issue of Peter denying the Lord three times. But the one who washed him, the one who will cleanse him, will wash and clean his feet on him or for him on the way to Peter's great accomplishments in the book of Acts. His eventual following Jesus into the doors of death right into the glory of heaven. Wow. How would you or I treat someone that denied us three times after we've done so much for that person? Aren't you glad that the one that washed you will come along later and wash your feet? When they need washing, Peter was probably really willing to lay down his life for the Lord. He just wasn't spiritually able and strong enough yet. But the day did come when he was. You see that? You see the great teaching here? He was already clean. Peter was already clean. And he is going to be where Jesus is. But along the way, he needed his feet washed. See, we, we got standing in state going on right here. If Peter's already good to go, he, his soul is right. But every now and then he's making these wrong decisions. Remember, he denied the Lord, but he needed his feet washed. You know what we need? If we're saved, we need to let Jesus Christ wash our feet. Every time we mess up, we need to let the Lord Jesus Christ wash our feet. I don't mean physically. I mean spiritually. We mess up. We need to get right with God. We need to let Jesus Christ cleanse our feet. It's, 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 a, it's a great teaching of sanctification. It's a great teaching of eternal security. You're all, you are already clean. You know, you know uh, Judas wasn't saved. That's why he didn't say he was clean. But all the other disciples were clean in, in the eyes of the Lord Jesus Christ. All they needed was some feet washing. That's all they needed. You know what we need today? All the time. We need to get those feet washed every day. We need to get those feet washed a whole bunch of times because we constantly get our feet dirty. We constantly engage in sinful activities. We constantly let our minds wander into sin and imaginations to wander in those areas of and realm that we don't need to be hanging out at. We cease to uh, try to let the old man be reckoned dead. We, we, we want that old man alive and well and to engage in the old life that we used to live and, and see our old friends that we used to sin with and go to the old places we used to sin and call up the old, the old girlfriends or the old uh, boyfriends for some whatever and, and they want to engage in all these things. What we need to do is put that thing to death. Reckon it dead. Reckon those things dead. You have nothing to do with those things. And let's move on for the you can do it. You can do it. God believes you can do it. Jesus Christ believes that you can do it. The Holy Spirit within you believes that you can do it. Problem is, you believe. Because you won't do it. Even though the whole glory of God believes you can, won't until you decide will. Amen. How about that for a closing of the foot washing right there? Just some neat truth on Peter there, huh? How about that? Uh, wow, just some some great truth on the foot washing. Just not what you expected, right? Uh, people just thinking, oh, there's going to be this big, giant spiritual uh, truth. And to me, it is spirit, big, big and spiritual truth. Um, the, the foot washing just represents our sanctification in the Lord. And every day, Jesus washes our feet. Uh, we're renewed in spirit every day. Uh, what a great thing. What a great truth. I was blessed by that study. I hope that you were too. A lot of great practical teaching in there. A little, little couple of side roads to, get to understanding the, the text and maybe some other ideas I brought into the picture there. But all scriptural, everything was lined up with the Bible. Um, nothing was way, way, way out there where you're like, whoa, man, what a weird teaching. Uh, now, I don't know about the Abraham's bosom thing. I know people are just going to think that's weird anyways because they, people just have a, a way about them. They don't, some people just don't care what the Bible says. And they're just going to keep going on with their traditional Baptist teaching. But um, I'm going to go with the Bible, guys. I believe the Bible, and I'm going to teach it like it, like it is until you can persuade me that that's not what it is. And uh, I haven't had anybody do that yet. I, have, I had a lot of talk with a lot of different pastors, and nobody, nobody can, can touch uh, the refute for what I got. 
So, amen. I'm, I'm going to stick with the Bible, guys. Uh, I, I'm not trying to get some neat truth that that is, you know, spiritual, make, trying to make me on top of the world. But, guys, I'm just going to believe the Word of God. And, and it, it's not something to divide over. I don't have to, to divide with people over Abraham's bosom. Uh, you want to believe Abraham's bosom is a place? Then, by all means, believe that. Uh, just don't expect me to. Uh, we can still fellowship on Jesus Christ, amen. So, yeah, let, yeah let's just do that, you know. Uh, but we're on a Bible teaching broadcast, so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover uh, what the verses say. And if I get an idea and a thought on some teaching that I think is false, I'm going to I'm going to be transparent. I'm going to let you guys know what it is. OK, and um, I, I don't mind because when my pastor preaches, he's he, he just preaches it verse by verse. You know, he doesn't care if you he hurt your feelings. I mean, I, I mean, I mean, come on with reason. OK, um, he's going to preach the Bible. OK, he, he cares about us he cares about people uh but you know he's going to preach the word of god he's going to let us know what it says and what it means and tell us that if we're not lined up with it we need to get right and if we're wrong we need to change so I, i'm trying to take that same approach okay so let's just believe what the bible says and uh throw all the tradition and all that out the door and uh some traditions are good to have they don't harm the bible text they don't harm bible teaching and some of the old ways are good um there's just nothing wrong with them there's can't find a a dogmatic verse for it but it's good and we do those things and i don't mind those things but when you start getting into the tradition where it violates scripture that's where you know i'm going to have my hand in that i'm going to be like wait a minute uh let's just stick with the bible okay so there it is. Uh, thank you guys again for your patience, for joining me on the broadcast. I had a great time. And, you know, we, we're, we're, we're only down to 17 minutes uh, that, you know, I just turned 17 minutes here. So we did a good, uh, we, had, we had a good run here on uh, John chapter 13. And I think it was, it was pretty decent. We, we, co we didn't cover the broadcast or make the broadcast too long. And I think they're doable. I think they're watchable. And I'm trying to reach more towards that. As far as redoing broadcasts, I don't think I want to do that. I'm just going to leave what I have up. And I know some of them, some of the older broadcasts are really low quality. They kind of, uh, I don't know they're kind of hard to listen to because I'm still conversing with people on the broadcast. Like their people are, I'm on Periscope and people are, are commenting and, and stuff like that. And, I, and I, I just find those kind of annoying because you just want to hear the teaching and get the Bible instead of hearing me, you know, going back and forth with people on a, on a commentary thing. So uh, just forgive me for that. Um, I want to do all my broadcasts like this. Now, I don't want to do none of that live stuff anymore where you got to talk with, communicate with people because uh, people like learning the Bible. I mean, people that are serious about Bible teaching want to just hear the, the, the teachings. They want to learn. They want to grow in the Lord. They want to hear what the Bible teaches. And that's how I would want to be if I was on a Bible broadcast. Look, if I like a Bible broadcast and I know they're bringing me a lot of truth, look, stay, stop commenting. Stop talking to all the people. Let me just hear the, the Bible and what it says, you know. So I appreciate people that get on here for those reasons. And uh, I'm going to try to keep it on that level. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll bring honor and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ with our intentions and our motives and our desires to in this Bible broadcast. Okay. So there it is. Um, I hope that you guys uh, continue to watch, join me uh, on the broadcast every Tuesday and Friday at 6 PM for the premiere of each broadcast of the book of John series. And for those of you that are interested in the Bible Q and a that you was like, well, I got questions I want to ask. I, I mean, I've got some hard ones. And uh, they're really stumping me, and I, I'm really, I'd really, it really help if Brother Ed could give me an answer to this. Um, we, me and Brother Justin, do a lot of studying in the Bible to answer the, the questions people give us on on every Monday night Bible Q and A. Um, it's at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's Florida time, and you can get on there, and we'll do our best to answer your question. But you've got to email me your question. Uh, don't leave it in a comment or anything because I probably won't see it. Uh, Email me, and I'm going to throw it up on the screen there. If you want to join the live Q&A on Monday night on Facebook Live, because we're going to be doing that tomorrow, uh, but uh, it is uh, trustthelordjesus at gmail.com. That is the contact email for Bible Q&A or any other questions that you'd have. Or if you have a comment about maybe problems with the video footage and the audio, just let me know. I, I, I like to hear the feedback of you know things that 
uh, are problematic. Maybe, uh, you know, the upload's not right or maybe a title's not right. Uh, just email me. I don't get I don't get bent out of shape if you email me some corrections I need to make. And so just do that. That'd be a blessing. And so I do thank everybody for your faithfulness and watching and just uh, and wanting to hear the Bible preached. Amen. Praise the Lord. The King James Bible. Amen. The word of God, the, the inspired, preserved word of God. What a great thing that we can. We're, we're able to be online and preach the word of God in truth to a lost and dying world and even to to encourage saved people. So what a great thing. So I'm going to end it here. Uh, this is. Go ahead and do it. This is Book of John, part 174, the Bible truth of foot washing, part six, our last and final broadcast of John 13. So we did uh, verses 34 to 38. And when we come back, Lord willing, we will be on John chapter 14. What a great time we're going to have in John 14. Uh, just some great truth in John 4. I mean, the whole Bible is great truth, but uh, I just look forward to, I like the book of John, just a great book uh, to learn from. I get encouraged uh, reading all these uh, uh, you know, accounts of Jesus and how he's speaking is just so encouraging to me. And, and when I'm preaching it and I'm, you know, I'm not only preaching it to you, but I'm, I get to hear it preached to me. And, and I'm just like, wow, this is so encouraging, you know, just being able to hear the words of Jesus and how he's speaking to people and how he's interacting with human beings while he was on earth in his first advent. What a great time it must have been to actually be in front of the King of glory and the one that created me just standing there with just in awe of his mighty power and who he is and the love and compassion and the humanity of Christ displayed before uh, everybody at that time must have been amazing and so amazing. All right, so uh, there it is. I don't, I'm just rambling on, but uh, just a great time in the book of John. Uh, look forward to it. Uh, looking forward to spending time with you guys on the broadcast and uh, all the studying that must be done in order to do these broadcasts. I, I, I enjoy it. Uh, just pray for my mind. Uh, my mind, I, I get forgetful a lot of times. Pray that my mind will be clear when I'm preaching and teaching that I won't jumble up, you know, maybe some teachings or so or end up in a contradiction on accident. I know sometimes my words can end up, you know, coming out wrong and uh, we don't I don't want to do that. I want to be right in the teaching and the broadcast so I don't have to, you know, take it off the Web and then fix it and then up re upload it. I just want it to be right the first time. But just pray that I can do that and that uh, the the broadcast would be a blessing people that would watch i'm going to end it here thank you guys for joining me on kjv bible scope my name is brother ed and may the lord richly bless you guys y'all have a great and wonderful